To continue to commit billions to this system uh, makes no sense at all. We've had enough of that, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot continue to live on a credit card, tell the American people that we're going to build all of these systems and at the same time invest in important things here at home and be serious about building a strong and, and good America. We don't tell the people. 25 years later, we just spend a lot more for yet more new nuclear weapon facilities. By the early 1990s, no other than Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney would stealthily issue the secret nuclear weapons policy, ordering the Pentagon to switch our 45-year focus from the Soviet Union and prepare for nuclear strikes anywhere, everywhere, against any country in the world. Our new policy would be called Global Strike, and it meant just that. For millions of us wondering, what happened to the great benefits of ending the Cold War? The deserved dividends to go to the great priorities for our planet and humanity, a cause millions of citizens gave their hearts and bodies to. Mr. President, esteemed citizens of the United States, we are grateful for your hospitality and we wish success, well-being, and peace to all Americans. Thank you. Here's the answer. The fruits of their noble efforts largely went right to an ever-hungry military nuclear congressional industrial complex. They did not deceive us, but others did, and we became a complacent people. This policy naturally required further developing increasingly secret, unrestrained, unaccountable, undemocratic institutions within a government claiming within this circle that supremacy was patriotic. Global Strike would revive, again, the reckless and irresponsible concept that nuclear war was survivable, winnable, and we were going to win it. A decade later, in September 2002, it's Dick Cheney again spreading what we now know to be a false claim that Iraq Saddam Hussein indeed had reconstituted his nuclear weapons program, showing the world manufactured proof. Disregarded by the Bush and Blair administrations before their Iraq invasion, it was Hans Blix of Sweden who led the UN Commission there who verified for the world that there were no nuclear weapons nor active programs. This planted fear convinced the nation to commence the longest war in our nation's history, now sold as unending war, securing for the war industry another reason to renew our nukes and all their facilities. I think we're talking out of both sides of our mouth about nuclear weapons and the future of, of the planet. Threats. That path is not a path that will ever lead to peace because its, its method is of war. Jonathan Schell perhaps wrote one of our most insightful, intelligent books on knowing the underbelly of our nuclear weapon world, detailing some of the mystery of why disarmament did not naturally follow with the end of the Cold War as it was to, and how we instead got the opposite with layers of concealment and confusion, adding the most important documents have been classified. In the documents we do have, the changes are couched in strategic jargon so vague, euphemistic, and abstract that it repels ordinary understanding. He would write clearly, Empire is founded on the unremitting threat of force and the use of force. Abolition is founded on the principle of cooperation, a principle commonly understood and lived by most humanity. 